So welcome everyone and we are so happy to have you here. Thank you all for joining us and Yuri, you can start whenever you're, you're ready. Oh, hello everyone. Ah, sorry. Um, <laughs> Yuri, uh, you can see my screen, I hope you're right. Yes, you we can. See. Okay, so I'm Yuri, um, a researcher at DCL. Uh, uh, DCL is located in Dedankimathi, near Kenya. So I'll take you through bad audio processing and bad call classification. Uh, I'm glad that uh, so many people have joined. I don't know how many people we are, but I can see like a number of people. Okay. Uh, also, a few colleagues of mine are also in the in the chat. So in case there'll be questions, you can you can interact with them. Um, okay. So okay, buds. I'll mostly talk about these five buds. I'll introduce you to diesel, um, introduce you a little bit to the hardware, then introduce you to the theory behind bioacoustics, the things that help it work. Then we'll try and do some classifications in the chart. Uh, I'll show you some uh, these buds and then play some audio and then see whether you can figure it out. Yes, that's that's mostly what we'll do. Okay, so so this is diesel. As uh, this is diesel, we were diesel last year in Arusha, Tanzania. So diesel is an a place. Okay, it's a research center where we develop systems in data science and AI, uh, but we also develop a lot of data collection systems. So it's mostly a place for researchers who are students in their undergrad and their masters to practice their skills. This is the larger group uh, during research day last year. Okay. Uh, we're located between Mount Kenya National Park in Abadea in the orange spot. This cell is located in Nyeri which is an orange spot between Mount Kenya National Park and Abadia National Park. So we do a lot of conservation work. Uh, it's located exactly here, uh, Deden Kimath University. Up there, where the kind of looks like an ax, like up there, there is the conservancy. Uh, just ab above the, la the last few at Deden Kimath University, it looks like an ax. So that that's the conservancy. Um, okay. So the work we do at Diesel is hardware design and intelligent software design um, in conservation and in health. The hardware design work we do is around camera trapping, electrical fence fault detection, review monitoring, and bioacoustics, as well as other things. So the just the ones I put here. Okay, intelligent software design, we work in orthopedics, smart camera trap data annotation, rheumatic heart disease, uh, tree inventory and measurement, and bat and bi bird bioacoustics. Uh, the bioacoustics hardware, this is a typical, on the extreme left, is a typical deployment we place in the conservancy. There's a mic at the bottom and the casing, and then a solar panel for repowering it, refilling the power. At the middle is an acoustic sensor, I didn't label it, but uh, in the, with the red tape, I would say the casing, that's the mic. And then the, uh, the green board is a Raspberry Pi. Then there's the diesel power board, uh, it's in white. And then there's the battery pack. Okay. If you want to know more about the hardware, there was a very interesting uh, talk uh, that my colleague Gabriel gave. On, on, on the bioacoustics hardware at uh, an ARM workshop, the ARM Environmental Data Acquisition and Processing uh, Workshop. You can get it at this link. I can maybe share it in the group, but it's also in the references. So why buds and why audio? Um, buds are a great indicator of the health of an ecosystem. Sound is a lot easier to capture and analyze than images. Uh, that said, uh, since we work with camera traps, we've actually been capturing a few images of birds. Uh, 
Marabu stock, a guinea fowl. I'm not certain what is on the bottom left. It could be a marabou stock because it's very big or an eagle. Uh, and then a common bulbul. Okay. Uh, so the, these are the birds we're going to work with in this uh, tutorial. But okay, when you see the image of a bird, could you actually like know which bird it is? Okay, this part I actually wanted to be a little bit interactive. So if you can, in the chat, uh, do, do you know what, based on the names, like one, two, three, four, five, uh, do you know what bird A is? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, now that, that's that's totally correct. Yeah, it's a very common bird in East Africa. It's actually when I was young, that's the only bird I thought existed until I saw others. Uh, then, okay, try two. Try, yeah, try two. Mm -hmm. okay, uh -huh. okay, someone answered all of them. Is A3 is B. Okay, try. Okay, okay. So, um, okay, it's easy to tell from the images. That's kind of my point. But then the problem also is if you three out of these images are camera, real professional, professionally taken images, uh, the other two are taken with with a camera trap, one I took with my phone as I was walking around. Uh, but then getting the images is hard. So let me just get back to the presentation. So if you're able to actually figure out the names, you you kind of start somewhere. Now, now we'll get into the audio. Because, OK, uh, the one in the top left was a pit crow. Uh, bottom left, a common bulbul, it's very common. Um, Atlabs turaco, uh, sounds kind of like a, like a primate. A tropical bobo, and then marabou stock. Personally, I find it sounds like a donkey. Uh, so so uh, what is audio? This is a typical image of how uh, most people, when, when they talk of audio, if they try to visualize it, they see this. So it's amplitude versus time. So when you speak, you kind of create uh, forces of, okay, it, it compresses the air, then releases. So your mic takes that. And that's, that's what's registered at specific frequencies. But when you're working with, with audio data for ML, you could either work with the raw audio. There are people who have found ways to do that. Uh, but an easier way, because of so much work being done in computer vision, is to work with audio as an image. So what you do uh, with audio as an image is you take the raw audio, and then you plot it frequency versus time. Mm, uh, maybe a good explanation of this would be like we humans here between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. And then like dogs, maybe birds, they hear something louder. Let's say like a whistle, a noise dogs a lot. And within, we also speak within a certain frequency. So like, for example, this was, a, this was some birds uh, between 1,000 and 2,000. You can see there's a lot of energy in that frequency. So that bird was vocalizing a lot of its sound in that frequency. Okay, a pit crow, I, I hope the sound will work. Uh, in, this, uh, in Kenya, we call it a kunguru. Yeah, it's, oh, okay, okay, it's a yeah. little loud, but at yeah. least it's working. Yeah, I was, I was, I was scared. <laughs> um, okay, so that, that's how the bird sounds. I'll, I'll play it again because I want 
you to maybe be able to find something. Um, okay, try and follow, hear the sound and try to look at the image and, and tell me whether you can see a pattern. I'll go through five of them and you'll see whether you can see a pattern. <laughs> Then the next one is a common bulbul. I hope I hope you're seeing a pattern. Um kind of so that. And then hat labs to Rako, go go. Uh, there's some buttons in the background. Uh, tropical bobo. And then our marabou stock. seconds okay so the thing i was trying to to show you there is with the different buds you can actually tell that there's there's a bit of symmetry between the spectrogram and the audio and time and for different buds they vocalize at different frequencies and they make their calls and the their songs in, in every every bird has its kind of way. Okay, there's every bird as an individual, but as a group, I mean as a species, every bird has its own vocalization of, 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 of songs and calls. So for an expert in bioacoustics, this is their typical pipeline. Uh, this is what they tend to do. They either follow A or B. Uh, a, e, okay, actually B, B is what started then A, but B is, listen to the audio, if you go body, you go what you do, listen to the audio, and you're like, oh, I think that's, 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 that's this part. But then another thing you could do is, you could take that audio, then, Gener use a short term Fourier transform, STFT, to generate a spectrogram. Then the expert would compare that to the spectrograms of birds they know. And, you know, like that bird that you just had was a uh, labs to Raku. But then, what about when you have like thousands of, of audios? You, 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 this is what, what, what would, be, would be good to do at this current age. You have an audio, for example, this. Someone type in the chat what, what they think that bird is. Are you sure? Are you sure that's the bird? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Just messing. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, the the, uh, the ML will help, will help, uh, will help the expert be able to say, okay, this this audio they collected is a film crew. Um, but then also the expert will train confirm, yeah, listen to it, it's a bit crazy, especially if they're doing research maybe around a specific bird or they're looking for something endangered. Maybe, you know, uh, there's the dodo one from Madagascar, they're extinct. Maybe you might be doing research specifically that. So, yeah, so it, it you, 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 you might be, you, you want to be more objective than spending a lot of time doing doing just data analysis. You want to also be objective and be able to be efficient. Efficiency is a big word. Okay. So 
especially when you have like thousands of, of audios. Um, things to keep in mind, birds have many calls and songs. Male and female birds vocalize differently. Birds in a flock, like uh, the, the, the pit crows were in a flock, and not just one bird, there are many. That's why the, the, the spectrogram actually changes because of that. And then there's also a noise, which is a major problem in the acoustics. Um, okay, so, uh, help, help, uh, what is it? You still have time. Yeah, okay, um, I want to also uh, do an exercise in Audacity. We'll actually take a bit of a, a, a path, do just a bit of exploration. So I'll stop sharing my screen first. Okay, so uh, you can see my screen, right? You good? Yes, yes, you can see your screen. Thanks. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll start from afresh. So this is Audacity. You can use it for, uh, okay, if you're audacious enough, you can use it to try and work with sound files. Uh, it will kind of give you a hands-on experience even if you're interested in ML or you're interested in you know, just audio processing or even music processing, you can try and use it. So what you do first is um, you'll open like um, an audio. In this case, I'm opening this. Um, yeah, it's the same audio. Uh, the, yeah, I see the screen. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll use multi-view because I want you to also see the spectrogram. Okay, so uh, I might be saying that this is the audio. This is, this is the area I'm saying that's audio, but you might want to fool around. You might want to cut out all the noise. Okay, in this case, there wasn't very much noise because I think this uh, microphone was a directional microphone and also it had a left and right uh, audio. So it, this was uh, still uh, a high-end microphone. Um, so, so for this, I have to edit. Let me reshare my screen instead. Okay. So you might want to like test things out. This is a common bulbul. Um, this is the test I actually wanted us to try. I'll have to pause, but I might be saying like the, 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 that's where the body is, but I actually want to, to prove it. So, Spectral deletion is is, is, is is overkill, but now when I play the audio, no sound. And even for the, the waveform, I think I deleted all the sound. You, you can try, you can try this out. You can also try and amplify the sound. I don't know whether it will work because I've already deleted it, but you can amplify it. Uh, maybe. Uh, Yuri. 
um, yeah. when when explaining the the tool, could you kindly take us through the steps as you walk through it? Oh, um, okay. Yes. Okay, I could I could repeat. Uh, okay, I'm, I was done with the part for explaining. I'll just repeat it. Okay. Uh, so, for example, like. Okay, so I loaded it. You'll just go to file. You open the file you're interested in. For example, it's this. I've already opened it, so I want to open it again. And then, okay, you can view your audio in two forms. Uh, multi view is best because you'll be able to see it in its waveform and also its spectrogram. Spectrogram up here this is the waveform. This is the left and right. It, it has two audios. You know, like when you, your earphones, you can listen to music that's kind of stereo. That's why there are two. Ideally, there'd be one. Maybe if you use like your phone. And then uh, if you want to investigate parts of the spectrogram, I, I find this tool to be useful. Going to go to effect, uh, spectral tools, you can delete it, delete a part of it, uh, it's, it's, it's empty. Then you can, you, you can just investigate it, uh, see the difference between that and something else. You can also try, try with, if maybe a different, like, um, let me open, there's the, the, the Hat Labs to Iraq who had a lot of uh, noise. So it's, this is the waveform, I'll go to multi-view, Spread it out a little bit. Um, okay, so there's a lot of noise up here. Maybe I'll, maybe, okay, let's see if we can actually remove it. So I select this part. Let's play it. Try spectral delete. Uh, I try and play it. Spectral delete is a bit. Crude. Uh, yeah, crude is a word I would use. You can try also fading it out. Mm -hmm. You can just try feeding it out. It it helps. There's, there's actually a different tool. Yeah, uh, edit multi tool. It kind of tries to reduce the the, the noise. It does it doesn't work totally. Okay. That's more of what I wanted to show you with the city. Uh, uh, right now, okay, at this point, I guess you kind of know what a spectrogram looks like. You can tell like this is a hot labs to rack audio. Um, but then now if you're using ML, uh, I'll show you some tools maybe you could use. So share just a sec. As, as you move to the tools, Yuri, are there someone who's asked um, yes. what uh, version of Audacity is that? The version? Yes. Okay. This is 3.25. I think it's the most recent because I downloaded it relatively recently. Okay. Uh, you can proceed. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, before okay, before I get into 
into the the ML because I'll 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 show a Kaggle model uh, made by Google uh, around East African birds. That if you're really interested in working with East African birds, you could try it out. It's it's not perfect, but it's it's working really well, and it has very many uh, species. Uh, so let's see here. This you can start with this 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 notebook. It's based on this model, this model, uh, and it's kind of based around this competition. So, so uh, what I'll do here is. Uh, we've been able to do some things in Audacity. Uh, the question is, can you do the same thing in code? So I'll do this, and then I'll put it side by side with with some. It, it's it's starting. I'll put it side by side with uh, an Audacity Audacity screen. So uh, let's see. It's, okay, first I'll, I'll actually just do this first, and then go to that. This is just using the pretend model. I forked it from Phil Carlton's notebook. A lot of this information is about how to generate a spectrogram. I, I won't get into that because it's, it's a little uh, deep. The model has 261 uh, classes, but then in the competition there are 264. So this is this is what, what he was mentioning. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is. I'll, I could go through five audios, but I'll go through one. Yeah, we can go through five if, 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 if we get time. So I'll just go through one. Uh, I'll use Librosa. So these are the tools I actually am going to use all of this. I import all of this in Python. Uh, very, some, things, some things that are very important here are this. This, uh, this is critical, this is critical, uh, this is critical, critical, but mostly it's this and TensorFlow. TensorFlow have actually been doing a lot of work in audio. Uh, so you, you can have a look if you open up your mind. Uh, so I'll be testing one audio, this audio specific on a pre-trained model of theirs. So I load it. And take some time. I'm only going to load ten seconds of it. The audio when it was being taken, it had a sampling rate of 22, 22 kilohertz. You, you, when you're sampling, you'd rather go higher, but I also won't get into that. So I'll play the audio. Um, you can try and tell me in the chat which one you think. It's, it's one of the five buds. Oh, I see someone actually asked me a question. What is the aim of the code? Uh, the aim of the code is to show you that you can do the same thing in Audacity, that you can do the same thing in code and how to do it. And then you're going to use the pretend model to predict. So, 
okay, I'll answer this question on the, the okay, on the bioacoustic recorders in house. I didn't want to talk about that much. Uh, I didn't really spend a good time developing that. Uh, I, Gabriel is in the chat. Will be when when the Q and A starts. You can just you can ask him, or you can check out his 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 video. His video is actually very informative. It will clear up all your questions. Mm. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a common bubble. Um, that's its waveform. Then you can generate its spectrogram like this using the browser. All you need to do is uh, get its audio up here. Get the audio up here. Uh, I'm using a sampling rate of 32,000 hertz. to generate this spectrogram. Then you'll compute the STFT. You'll have to do this whole process. Then you'll get this. And then I want, want to show you the same thing in, in Audacity. To open the same audio. It is in multi view so that you can see the spectrogram. So this is side by side. They are pretty close. Uh, yeah. I think uh, theirs is, oh, theirs is stretched out to 15,000 hertz. Yeah, 15,000 hertz. Ours is uh, at 8,000. So a little bit more compressed. Six seconds. There's the whole, yeah, and that's it, it's the whole thing. Okay, then. I think I'll play it again. Okay, so uh, this audio is from the class common bulbul. Uh, if, if you actually want to like know what this is, uh, uh, it's this acronym. So, okay, and, and the model was 96% sure. The, uh, because I guess the common, the pretend model would understand it relatively easily. But that's, that's kind of the gist of everything. Mm. Okay, other things I would like to say. This is this is it. You can find it, you can find a lot of info on eBud uh, on all the buds, the Marabu stock and Tropical Bubu and the Atlab Turaku and the Pit Crow and any other bud you're interested in. And also you can use the Nocanto. There's a lot of information here, uh, especially if you're interested in the acoustic clip. This is a really good place to start. And another good place to start is our notebooks. This, this three in particular, uh, this 10 ML audio classification, where acoustics, they're all public, and the AMDEV summit. Or oh, the uh, for the person, uh, I think it was Chris. Chris, you asked about, oh, oh sorry, Kali, Kali, you asked about uh, the, the in-house recorders, we can have a look at this, 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 this repo. It has everything you need to know. And you can, I think, I think there's a direct link to, 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I think you, you can um, kindly share that in the chat, Yuri. Thank you for the presentation. We'll just uh, jump straight, uh, straight into the questions that were asked uh, during registration and also some that we picked during um, the presentation. So um, the first question is, if someone is looking for data sets, where can they find it? Um, data sets? Yes. Um, it, one, it depends on the region you're from. Uh, one, there's Zenokanto. Zenokanto is a really good place to get data on audio. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, Kaggle is a good place, but I'd also, I think I, I would say also collecting your own data would, would be useful. Understanding it from a primary point of view, then working with secondary data will, will, will be more useful than collecting audio but from the net. But yeah, if you're interested, then account is a good place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, also, um, there was a question during registration on how can someone record um, the audio, um, what tools are available to actually collect the, the data? Um, hardware tools? Hardware yeah. Tools. Oh, okay, there's, okay, there's, um, if, if you're looking for industrially made hardware tools, the audio mouth is good. Mm, or you could try, you could actually try and follow. You, you, you could use your phone. That's it. As much as, as much as people think phones are actually not so good, they are. And another option would be you could follow, you could follow this. Um, you could, okay, I really need to actually add this. this YouTube video I'm talking about. Um, let's see. I'll just stop sharing it. Are you sharing uh, the video? No, no, no. I, I want to, yeah, I want to share the video. Okay. It's a really good place to start if you're interested in audio. Um, or if you want to buy something that's already been made, you can just use. Is the audio most? Okay. As you look for the for the okay, you've shared it in the chat. Uh, there was also someone asking: Are these um, tools readily available in the East African market? Uh, pardon, I didn't get you there. There was someone who asked, are the tools, are the recording equipment readily available in the East African market? Mm. Okay, we, we, were, we were able to actually design this, this ourselves. So to some level, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay. But, but if, if you're really interested, like actually look at this, look at this, it's, it, it's a very comprehensive, it actually takes you through um, how you can put together all this and design the actual acoustic sensor. So yeah, this, this was like a really good, good introduction. I don't work specifically with hardware, that's why with the hardware questions, I'm actually ha having some trouble. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, but but because I mostly work from uh, acoustic data going forward, but then if you're also interested in like getting hardware, uh, contact Diesel. You can we can get you some. Can design for you, and we'll we'll just get you some. Yeah. Okay. Um. We can move to the software bit and AI. So. There were a few questions on AI. Is it possible to use AI to identify different individuals or birds from their songs? 
uh, different individual birds of the same species? I believe so, yes. Um, you'd have to prove it, yes. Because, okay, you'd kind of get, if, if it's the same species, it would be, okay, one, the same bird, it's like, it's more of like, you are doing voice, voice detection for a person, but then you're just doing it in a bird. Now you love to just train it on, you love to have enough data of that specific bird, and then know which bird is maybe bird A and bird B of the same species. So yes, but short, short answer is yes. Okay. Um, also, we had a few people ask about the, because you're working with large um, data, what are some of the simple procedures or techniques that can be used to efficiently manage and process large bad audio data sets? Okay, converting, if, if, you have a, if you have a lot of, a lot of data, like, massive amounts of data, okay, even not massive, even in the thousands, and you want to be computationally efficient, uh, you can convert all your data into arrays, uh, vectorize them, and then use maybe GPUs or TPUs, and you'll be able to do a lot of the processing really quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, then there was a specific question on TDSC. What is the starting point of coding a TDSC method for species identification? TDSC? I believe TDSC is time domain signal coding. I haven't worked with it, so. Okay, <laughs> that's. Fine. Then also another one that was a bit specific. Um, what are some of the software workflows that someone can use to compare manual species ID from sonograms or spectrograms to automation? Yeah. Uh, please repeat that question. What are some of the software workflows that uh, someone can use to compare manual a species ID from sonograms or spectrograms to automation. automation. So comparing manual to automated. Mm. Okay, I think I think I think if if you if you if you want to if you want to automate, the idea would be you automate the whole system. So for example, like if you're using if you're using co if it's software, you automate the whole whole system, use a model, then you sample regularly between if it's like between bird species, maybe you can sample how is it performing on lesser known birds, or or you can check the energy of, of that of, of of one or two sampling, it would be more of sampling because you'd have built more of a industrial pipeline automation. You know, it's like just you'd have built an industrial pipeline for understanding your audio. Then if you're able to sample, you'll be able to check maybe one in every 100. You can compare now that performance. But uh, also you could try with, with one model, the model that you've built, you can try and find out the accuracy, recall, precision, F1 score. Uh, there's also the, you can try the CMAP, uh, mean average precision. You could, use, you could use those metrics, not just on the trained data set, you could also use it on test and validation. You'll be able to figure out. Okay, um, thank you for that. And to just follow up on the automation bit, how does one automate the process of multiple bad calls into a usable table of species data? Okay. 
Okay, so for example, should should this code? Uh, I'll actually share this code. Um, so, for example, in this in this case, this was one audio. It was only ten seconds long. I would say it kind of took took long to process. But then, if you have multiple of these audios, so for example, like here, there is uh, in in this in this in this data set, there, there, there are so many. There, there are two hundred and sixty four species. Ideally, if you have your own, you have you have your resources, uh, computational resources, and you have all your data, and you take a model like this. Um, or like this, but you would just use use this this same thing, but then just run it on every single file, and know okay this file has this pad, this file has this pad, and you just leave it. If it's going to take a day, let it take a day. You just leave it and then come back. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Um, there's also someone who's asked what supplementary softwares are typically used to manage large audio data sets. Uh, for example, what software can be used to batch rename audio files? Batch rename? Yes. Um, batch rename meaning you're naming it with the species or just naming it so that you can be able to process it. If it's, I, if it's okay, if it's if if it's you already know the species, I think mm -hmm. you can use Python. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use Python. You can use Python. Python is good. Uh, you can also use okay uh, specific libraries of Python. You could try Touch Audio. Uh, you could use TensorFlow. TensorFlow is actually really good uh, because the uh, the TensorFlow team work a lot with with recurrent data. That, that's why mostly you'll find uh, PyTorch is used for computer vision. TensorFlow works with a lot of recurrent data and it's tuned for recurrent data. So okay, using that would help. If you if you're just naming them so that you can be able to use them in your pipeline, I guess I guess also Python or the one is more of yeah Python works Python works I think that's the solution you can use with Python you can use the OS library uh, Pathlib uh, Sh 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 Shatil yes okay I answered the question. I answered the question. Yes, I, I think yes, I, I think you you did answer the question, and um, a few more questions. So, how does one sort out the data and also um, filter out the background noise? That's something we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, one. Uh, you could try working with the energy, the energy of background versus if 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 your foreground its energy is stronger than the background, which it should, because that's why they are named foreground and background. You mm -hmm. could try and reduce the energy of of the background, and and then and then now work on it. So, for example, like in the example I gave. Uh, I was I was just clipping clipping the background out. It was causing a little bit of of, of, of uh, silence. It was a silent sound, but that that's kind of what you'd be trying. So you could you have those two options. Okay. Thank you so much for that. I'm aware we are almost at the hour. Um, so. I'll ask one big question and then we can close. So what do you think is the next big development in acoustic monitoring of um, bird species? 
Next big development would be okay, what I think. Okay, what I think is using acoustics in in reforestation and afforestation and in agriculture. Because mm -hmm. I think those three are issues that that okay with climate change, that's that's it it would be a lot better to have deserts you making deserts forests or farmland than you making forests farmland yes or you reforesting so if you're able to actually um, use bioacoustics to monitor the health of of, of that forest um, okay there's also the work that, I know there's also work in forestry and there's even one I showed you that we uh, working on in diesel. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's the one I would, I would, I would bet on. And in agriculture, because I think also to some level, I think birds react a lot to what we do in agriculture. If you're using a lot of pesticides, um, yeah, in agriculture, it would help because you'd find that a, 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 farm, a farm that has a lot uh, it produces food well and constantly, and it has controlled its resources well. It knows how to provision its water, um, knows how to irrigate well. I, I think I think you'll find a lot of birds there. I think there's also a reason why in in, in a lot of uh, films you'll find uh, good farmers tend to have scarecrows. There's a reason. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Yui, for the uh, presentation and for taking us through the Q&A session. So as we close, um, could you kindly share a few of the Python libraries you talked about during the presentation? And um, thank you all for joining us um, for the session. The recording will be shared in a few days and you'll be able to access it on YLabs and our YouTube channel next week. Um, We'll take our tech tutors break next week, but we'll be back for episode eight, um, where Howard will answer the question, how do I create a flight plan for an aerial survey sample count? Um, we hope that you'll join us. Thank you once again, and have a lovely uh, rest of your day and week.